How's it going, Team Eclipse Grunts? Admin Insider here with a Pokemon Theory Disproved video. Today we're going to be discussing the issues with the theory that Butterfree and Venomoth were mixed up. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. The theory that Venomoth and Butterfree were accidentally switched has been a popular Pokemon theory for many years, but it may not be as solid as it's said to be. Before I get into the bugs of this theory... Oh god, I can't believe I just said that. Anyway, let's get into a brief overview of the theory out of the way. Pokemon fans point to appearance-based evidence to support the theory that Butterfree and Venomoth were supposed to be switched in their evolutionary lines. The supporters of this theory will point to the similarities of Venomoth, Caterpie, and Metapod compared to the similarities of Venonat and Butterfree. Simply based on the appearance, it does look a lot like these Pokemon could have been switched, and this is evidence enough for some Pokemon fans. Whew! Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the busting. The first problem with this theory is the fact that Venomoth is a moth, and Butterfree is a butterfly. I mean, that should be simple enough, right? Pokemon has been known to have some weird evolutions in the past, though. That's right, Remoraid, I'm talking to you. Anyway, it doesn't seem too far-fetched to think that Pokemon would have a moth evolved from a cocoon, but they made it a butterfly, which makes a lot more sense. On the other side, though, it really does not make any sense for a gnat to evolve into a butterfly, especially because of the way butterflies mature in real life. The process of metamorphosis is not present in gnats or moths, and Metapod being the transitional stage of metamorphosis between Caterpie and Butterfree makes a lot of sense since it represents the actual life cycle of a butterfly. However, evolving from a gnat to a butterfly without a transitional stage makes it hard for me to believe. Now even with all of this, there are still probably people who will back this theory. Since the main point of the theory is to state that the developers switched their Generation 1 sprites and just kept it that way to act like they didn't mess up at all, we would need some sort of proof for this mess up to have occurred. The main reason why the supporters of this theory believe the theory is the designs of the Pokemon. However, since the designs actually do make more sense the way they are, that piece of evidence goes out the window. And now the theory is left with literally nothing. Not a single scrap of proof for the theory to be true, and with that, I will call this theory busted. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and share the video with a friend. I highly recommend subscribing so you don't miss a video on this channel, and check out some of the other amazing content creators in Team Eclipse. Thanks again for watching, and this has been Admin Insider, signing off.